It's time for Two Guys and a Goalie with Dustin Nielsen, Matt Cassian, and the goalie, Joaquin Gage. All right, here we go. Episode 24 uh, of Two Guys and No Goalie. First time ever. It's this just been two be, of us. This is going to be fun. This is interesting. Uh, Gager had some work stuff come up, so it's just the two of us. And, of course, Hernan Salas, who's with us as well, he's going to be playing along later on with our uh, Keep It or Clip It. Uh, so, yes, yeah, thank you very much for downloading the podcast. We uh, do appreciate it. If you're watching the live stream, thank you very much as well. You'll notice on the live stream today that we have our Christmas background all set up now. Which is nice. Hernan, how does it look? Does it look pretty good? Oh, I love it. Yeah. It's the best one yet. Like, we did the beach one. We did a couple other ones, but this one's the best. Yeah, the far. Halloween one was pretty good. Yeah. The beach one was solid, uh, but this one's pretty good. As uh, you can see with um, the background behind us, uh, Gager's face is in the middle of the wreath. <laughs> so he's, it's, it's like he's here. Uh, all the time with us, so that's that's kind of nice. But um, yeah, so it is the season. Here we go. Yeah, it's, happy uh, holidays. Starting to feel that way, isn't it? Though, a little bit, cast. Like, are you starting to like I'm, as I'm it hits there. you now? Like, I'm getting there. Well, it, it's been for a little bit because my daughter has every morning when she's woken up um, asked if it's Christmas. Oh, every, <laughs> and every how day. how old is she? Four. Okay, yeah, so no, I got a four year old like, too. Yeah, Dada, is it Christmas today? Yeah. and I'm like, no, honey. How many more sleeps? I'm like. Are uh, you counting yeah, down yeah. sleeps as well, eh? Yeah. Oh, yeah, she yeah. counts sleeps. Yeah, we're in the middle of that as well. So it's a pretty exciting time. I feel like Christmas starts when um, when I start shopping. Like, then you're in the thick of it, right? And I've started shopping two or three days now. Yeah. I've gone out. And, Mostly for yourself. Yeah, I mean, I don't have a list from anybody just yet, but I know exactly what I want. So Do you guys do lists? Uh, no. Do your family do lists? No, well, my wife keeps a list in her phone of things that we want to get for the kids, but that's like as far as it goes. Oh. I don't even know what my wife wants for Christmas. I still don't See, have an I, idea. I, I make, I make her do like we do lists. You you really like for her? Like you push it. Her, you're like, give me a list. Give me a list. Well, because it's happened before where I've got something, and maybe it wasn't received as well as I would like it to be yeah. received. And I don't like when that happens. So if she can give you a list and you can pick a couple things off the list. There you go. Yeah, and then happy. then you're making then, everybody then you, happy. Everybody's happy. Yeah. What do you where do you come out on gift cards for Christmas? Depends on the person. Yeah, that's I, true. I get I go for people, a wife. Can't do it, right? For a wife, that's a little tougher. <laughs> I feel if you're buying for a family member, because we draw names, like yeah. my extended family, we all see so you. Only yeah, that's what we do too person. now. Yeah, I've names. got, uh, oh, I can't say who I got just in case they're watching. Yeah. I almost let it slip. Oh, everyone knows who, who they have. Oh, really? It's like, yeah, it's like everyone knows who they have. It's oh. not a secret thing. but it's, Oh, okay, we do a secret yeah. one. It's yeah. like we put a cap on it. It's like there's a limit. Yeah. Like, like upper band, lower band. For kind of what you have to spend between these yeah. the gifts, and then everyone sends out their list, and that's just so you don't get, you don't get any. Yeah, like, you, you don't want any garbage, right? No, no, that's the last thing you want, especially no. as an adult now. Like you don't get many Christmas presents anymore, so you want yeah, something you that actually good. work, right? Like you yeah. want something good, which I think is key. Like what's what's the age for a secret Santa? Because it, we're doing it in my family for the first time. My niece is fifteen; and she refused to partake in it because she wants a present from everyone. Good. First of all, good for her. And I said, you're not 15? getting a present from me because you're selfish. Yeah. yeah, that's that's 15 is yeah. that's a little unnecessary. Like, I respect her for taking a stand, for 14, though. <laughs> 14, even I go like, okay. 13, I go like, well, I understand not wanting to do that. Yeah. 15, I'm kind of grow up. Thank you. Thank you. So what happens? Is everybody getting her present? Yeah, or well, she, she's like so the baby she's of the family. So the grandparents are going to get her something, her parents. But I'm like, you're not getting anything from me. No, you're old you. enough. To buy a present for someone. Is this your cousin or your... Well, my niece. Oh, so Uncle Hernan's yeah. a real dick. Yeah. That's what I'm seeing, yeah. You know what I was going to say? Is always a good gift card to give? Popeye's chicken gift card. Oh, now that's a good wow. idea. Yeah. Popeye's you chicken know, gift we card. We could probably snake a couple of those. Maybe we could. Dish them out. That'd be a really Maybe good idea. Maybe we could. Actually, you know what was once... So my... <laughs> this is a Christmas story. My um, my sister-in-law, my sister-in-law, um, she, she has special needs. Okay. Uh, so my wife's older sister... And um, I was down there. We were down there visiting for Christmas a couple of years ago. And uh, my wife's brother was there too. Like everyone was staying at, uh, at her mom's house. And her brother was responsible for doing the stockings because they always did stockings okay. the night before Christmas. So he went and he did the stockings. So he knows what's in the stockings. Her older sister woke up and went and switched like the food gift cards. <laughs> In the because she went, she woke up, must have woke up at like four in the morning, yeah. like went and looked what was in her stocking, like decided she didn't want 
this, <laughs> the, you know, the one gift card yeah. in her stocking. Yeah. So she switched it with her brothers who, who intentionally put, because he wanted the one. Like, yeah. He wanted, like, it was like, uh, we maybe even been Popeyes. Yeah. Like he wanted the Popeyes one in his. So it's like in his. So she went up them. And so she switched it. <laughs> and then, so everyone obviously knows this, but she, you know, Laura still thinks that there's an actual Santa. Yeah. Like she's, she will always think so. Cause yeah. uh, that's just where she's at. And, um, so you're trying to like, you basically without trying to say like Santa's not real and like have this, like yeah. to ask her questions and like get to the bottom of the mystery of, because we yeah. know that she switched it, just seeing her <laughs> try to like do the, the, the gymnastics in her head, like, or the explanation, like trying to dig herself out of, yeah. like, I actually went and I switched this. And then at the end of it, she just goes, Santa's not even real. And she doesn't believe that. She just was saying she it. She was so trying that, to say it. Well, and for any kids listening to the podcast or watching the live stream, of course Santa's real. Yeah. How else do your presents get there, right? <laughs> so, yeah, obviously. But, uh, yeah, switching the... So, uh, my, my recommendation after that whole debacle would be that if they're stockings and if... You have a Popeye's gift card in someone <laughs> else's, and you don't have one in yours. There's another gift card from, say, some other yeah, restaurant. Yeah. I think you should switch it. Oh, that'd be that's a good idea. Get take, your hands on that Popeye's thing. Yeah, card. definitely. Well, I was thinking this. Um, well, we'll save it. We'll do it for. Uh, I think it's during a question for keep it or clip. It. Yeah, yeah. We'll save that for a little bit later. Um, it is uh, episode twenty four. Two guys and a goalie. Presented to you by Odd Shark. Scott Hastings will join us from Odd Shark a little bit later on. They are a presenting sponsor. Check out everything you need to know about sports betting at oddshark.com. Also, of course, sponsored by Popeyes and Sport Clip Haircuts, where it is good to be a guy. I will be in a Sport Clips next week, getting a new haircut to go over to uh, Switzerland. You can't go over there looking like a bum. Like if there's one country in the world, you can't go looking like a bum. So here's it's my question. Are you going to wear like really tight pants? Well, nobody sees my pants. But just to be over there, everyone like, wears really tight to pants. To get my hair cut? No, no, not going to. <laughs> no, when you go to Europe. Uh, like when you're I'll probably there, wear not, like, not when I'll, I'll wear the, these jeans. But those aren't tight enough for Europe. It's, it's tight enough for me, man. I got. I could be on a flight. I mean, you gotta wear these, and then I wear dress pants pretty much all week. So, are they going to be tight dress pants? No, I don't wear tight clothes, man. I try dude, to wear as baggy as stuff European, as I can. It's the European way. Really? You gotta wear. So, what are you going to? So, have you been to Europe? Yeah. Did, okay. Did you wear tight jeans? Yeah. No, you didn't. No, I definitely. Like, are did. we talking like Will Ferrell tight pants song not, type not pants? Not quite or? that. Okay. Type. All right. And also for the suits, uh, are you into that uh, style? I think Tommy Gazzola does it. Uh, of course, Tommy wearing, Gazzola does it. You're wearing a suit, but instead of the you know dress socks, you're wearing like uh, no socks. Oh, no, no, you wear socks, but they're almost like the uh, Converse socks where you can't see them. Yeah, they're like and no then, socks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like ankle socks. Yeah, like, like yeah, below, 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 so it below it. Like so then, so it looks like you're not wearing socks. I still think like I understand Hernan that that's like fashion. Now. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. still think that one's dumb. <laughs> I have some of those socks. I wear them in like the summer with like a certain only a yeah. couple well, pairs of shoes. But with for like a dress, sh- yeah, no way. For dress, for, I wear. I've got all these. I was at a golf tournament like two years ago, and I got like eighty pairs of dress socks. So I've got all fun? types of cool yeah, dress socks. Yeah, all yeah. over the place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's very See, cool. That's, I don't know. I just I think it's weird because even if you are wearing the things underneath, I'm sure there's some people that just don't wear socks yeah. in their dress shoes, and it just makes me think they're gross. Because now the suit pant is 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 like the style now. It's, it's like crop. it's almost yeah, up to your shorter. ankle, so crop. you show your like yeah, you show yeah. your cool sock. But yeah. why would you want to show just your ankle and your hairy foot? Like, <laughs> <laughs> dumb. I just uh, I just, just, I just like, bought I, I just bought a new suit. Oh, good. Yeah, that's good. Now I have four. I have four suits. Four now. suits. Wow. How many suits did you have? I don't know. Yeah. Four or five. I actually not not too many. Really? No, because you. I would retire them. I'd get like one a year, one new one a year, and, and you just let, that's one. it. You just you get one a year, and then you you have them for four or five years, and then at the end, like you retire. So one you're just year. rotating two suits. You're playing days. Like, I said like four or five. Oh, okay. Oh, sorry. I thought you said two. No. Oh, okay. Oh, so that's not bad. Then rotate one in. You got you a rotate good, one okay. like every so you have it yeah, for yeah. like five or six years, and then it gets rotated out when yeah. it just gets worn down, or if it if it you know, gets worn down before then. I went and got a pretty nice suit at uh, George Richards. For like tall big guys, did you go? Did you go like uh, um, like uh, Cyber Monday or Black Friday? Or like uh, I went. I, I got a good deal on it. Yeah, nice. I got like fifty percent off. It was sweet. Nice. But I also like. I was like going in there. This might be a, a a dick thing to say, but I like going in there because it's a it's a store that's for tall guys and big guys. And when I go in there, I actually have to get like the smallest thing and i'm just like oh do you have this in uh 48 tall not uh, 50 they're like oh i don't know sir this is usually you're, you're getting the smallest one here i'm like finally once in my life i'm getting the smallest like that's why i like to shop there it's kind of greasy but at the same time the stuff does fit well 
So it does. if they're yeah. watching, yeah. So if they're watching, uh, if you'd like to sponsor this, I'll stop wearing plaid on the uh, <laughs> on the live stream. Uh, okay, so we'll get to some hockey stuff in a second. But as you probably picked up, whether you're downloading the podcast, or watching the live stream, Gager's not with us today, uh, which means we have to kind of play the role of Gager. So uh, yeah. Gager does two things here on the show. Okay, <laughs> he tells funny stories and he makes sexual innuendos. So, which side of Gager do you want to be today? I'll do the story side. <laughs> really? I yeah, thought I'll for do the sure. Story okay. Side. All right then. Well, I will. Uh, I will say. Uh, I'll say <laughs> boobs. <laughs> uh, uh, that's one of the things we did at the last episode. We were doing our um, podcast code of conduct, and you had a good suggestion after. Yeah, well, that it's only four points. It's only four because the NHL changed it, but they hadn't announced that officially yet. Not when point. we did it. Yeah, we were coming up with our own code of conduct. They didn't do their thing. They did their four point plan or whatever. So I'm like, well, we could do a four point. Yeah, Hernan, you weren't in on that text, but that's a good idea, right? Because then you can, if we want to drop one out. We can put one in, so if we have to move like a new code of conduct point into the group, we kick one out. There's only ever four. There's only ever four things it. that we need to it's a great we need to worry about. So that's what we're going to do moving forward. Um, your five sexual innuendos will be one for sure. Yeah, that's like a, good a, one a to max of five. Yeah. Um, I thought Gager's thing of don't piss your wife off. That's pretty. Was good. pretty important yeah, that's, too. That's really good. Um, so those are two that I really want to lock in. Oh, don't drink before the podcast. Yeah, that's good. That's one. a good one yeah, too. So that's that's a good one. that's a strong three to start of our four points. So those will be three that we officially lock in. And we'll go from there. Uh, all right, let's see here. Oh, man, let's start with the coaching changes. Uh, two different places for two different reasons. Um, let's start with Jim Montgomery, where the story really hasn't even still come out. They said it wasn't anything that the league's looking at from a player perspective. So it wasn't racial. It wasn't physical abuse. It wasn't uh, verbal abuse of any of his players or anything like that. Sounds like he might have done something sketchy with somebody else in the organization, yeah, and they said would, that's enough. You'd like think, it would, ha- you'd, you'd think it'd have to be like we haven't heard anything, so I'm assuming there's no like lawsuit unless it's going on behind closed doors. Yeah, yeah I thought like, I saw somebody say it's not going to be any legal issues. Yeah, either, like no, so. so you don't even know if it was sexual harassment. Maybe yeah. it was just general conduct. Maybe he was treating people poorly. I, I don't know, but it's something. It clearly it's something behind uh, behind uh, closed doors. I'm thinking I'm going to play my gauger role here. And I'm going to say what everybody's thinking. Maybe he sent a picture of his junk to somebody. And they, they, they probably, maybe they did, right? Maybe like that's not going to be legal, but they're like, Hey man, you can't be doing that in the organization. Like we yeah. just don't or want maybe that. Maybe it was so. settled outside. You yeah. don't know because if it, if it, if it's not going to be a legal thing and if there was a settlement, it's still not, it becomes not. Oh, that's like true. A, that's just no like buried lawsuit, forever, right? Buried forever, right? Yeah. It's settled. And part of the settlement could be to, that it's buried forever and then it went away. So it's, it's possible that so, that's. So that's interesting whatever. because they're a team that would play pretty well. They're yeah. a playoff spot. And all of a sudden Jim Montgomery has done some good things. There is out um, on the other side of it. Well, Rick Boness has taken over. He has some ties to Ottawa. Did you ever play for him anywhere no, along the way? No. No. He was in Ottawa, I guess, before your yeah, time. Yeah, would have been. Yeah. He would have been there before you. A couple of years. A couple of years before. Um, and then the San Jose Sharks, just uh, just very recently here, uh, they let go Pete DeBoer. Um, they started very poorly, and then they got it together for a while, but now they've lost five in a row. Their save percentage is atrocious, but they've also only scored seven goals in their last five games. So there really wasn't many positives around that organization right now. Um, but with that being said, I think they're like six points out of a playoff spot. So were you surprised at all that they decided to ax him? Not after dropping five in a row. No. Not after dropping five in like, a row. Like, combined with the bad start at the combined beginning. Combined with yeah. the bad start. If it was just, if it had a good start to the season, and then they just had a skid and lost five in a row, you go, probably it'd be weird to fire him. But since they did struggle early on, and they still are out of a playoff spot, it's not surprising at all. And if there was one concern I had, and I was high, I thought they were going to be a pretty good team this yeah. year. Um, if there was one concern, it wasn't even the goaltending, although I know that's an issue, that I had with the San Jose Sharks was that they didn't have enough high-powered scoring up front. They they have a great def- defense, guys that can produce all kinds of points in the back end, but I was worried that they would not have guys that are putting the pucks on the top two lines in the net. Now, Pavelski isn't Pavelski of... Five years ago. No, but, but Pavelski's that produces. veteran guy who can produce. Yeah. Whereas with him gone, a lot of it falls on Logan Couture, who's he's he's not Jack Eichel. He's not that level offensively. And then Thomas Hurdle, Timo Meyer, some of these guys who had nice seasons offensively last year, they have to be the guy now. And there's I think there's a difference there, right? And that's probably coming back to bite him in the butt a little bit yeah. right now as well. Absolutely yeah. it is. Absolutely it is. And we can blame this on a little bit on the goaltending. Jones hasn't been very good. I always look at situations like that. As you said, they've only scored seven goals over that five-game stretch. Yeah. 
your goalies are going to be more vulnerable because the second you're down in games and you're you're not scoring, you have to start opening up the game, which means giving up higher uh, great opportunities against, and then your goalie's going to get scored on and scored on more often, so he looks even worse, and then his confidence is gone. So it's just a snowball effect of bad things that happen when you don't score enough goals. And that's what we that's what we saw. And it's getting laid at the feet of Mr. DeBoer. Do you think that there is any chance the Sharks could go on a blues like run in the second half of the season? You're in coaching change. Now, with that being said, the big thing for the Blues last year was Bennington came in and was lights out. Uh, which, I mean, maybe maybe Jones finds his game or what, but do you think the Sharks could still do that? Like, could we be talking about the Sharks? Uh, because they've been there. This group has been there in, like, a Western Conference final and, you know, that, that level. Do you think do you think this this is still possible for them, or is this year maybe a little bit of a write-off? Well, let's look at the – let's compare. Let's compare the two teams. St. Louis plays a little bit more physical. Last year they played a little bit more physical, maybe a little bit more offense up front than yeah. they had last year. But both have really good def- defense – um, they do. And that's uh, defensive groups, not necessarily team defense at this point, but defensive group. And that's what they relied upon. That's what they needed. And San Jose has the capacity to do that. If they if they really start to play, like we've seen with Dallas, where they started to play and games start to be won and momentum is built and they start chugging along, they, they can do it. I don't think they're going to do it. Like, it's so rare, even for a really good team, to have that good of a second half of yeah. the season. But they certainly could um, storm back into it. Like, I'm not at this point ready to completely write them write them off and to say they're not going to make the playoffs. There's no chance. Hernan, are we going to connect with Scott Hastings? We want to do that. We'll get to Hastings, and then we'll have Peter Labardius around 1240 today. How about this stat? And it was a big game last night because Washington and Boston are absolute juggernauts. They're both, like, running away with their divisions. I don't know when was the last time we saw two teams this dominant over everybody else in, in, the, in the... Like, last year, Tampa was great, but outside of that, it was a pretty good pack the rest of the way. These two teams have been amazing. How about this stat? The Capitals have won 16 of the last 17 meetings against Boston. And Boston's been pretty damn good for a long time. Like that, I didn't believe that when I saw that today, but that's the truth. What do you make? And they did it again last night. Like they, it was it was a tight game, but 3-2, Carlson, Oshie, like the same sort of guys for Washington, got it done again. This is weird, It's it? It's really it's weird. weird. That's kind of like, how long was it Edmonton that had like the streak in Anaheim for... Oh, it was like 20 some, was it, was it 20, 20 some games or something? Yeah. Like, it's just weird. Like that has to just be one of those things, right? Like Like, what statistically, I'm sure you could pick it apart a little bit. mm -hmm. That's just weird. Like, like if this was Washington beating Ottawa. Oh, you just feel like it's normal. Yeah, it's a shitty team and a really good team, but. But you think that's pretty evenly matched from like a record standpoint, from a success standpoint, both Stanley Cup winning teams over the last, like whatever years, um, both good playoff teams like they've had playoff success they have veteran leadership and it's just weird like it shouldn't it shouldn't happen but it does it's nothing against like the rest of the eastern conference because i'm sure there'd be some pretty good series along the way but i really want boston washington for a best of seven like we gotta have it it'd be pretty fun oh man nothing again like maybe you know tampa still hasn't really got it going like no which i'm sure they will but uh, okay let's bring in scott hastings from a presenting sponsor odd shark check them out at oddshark.com i want to know if scott had money on washington after we were just talking about their dominance of boston they've beaten the bruins 16 of the last 17 but the bruins are a powerhouse club as are the capitals um did you have a wager last night in that game and how ridiculous is it that the capitals have beaten the bruins 16 of 17 yeah, I uh, I was leaning towards the Cats in the game, but I played with the under instead, and that one hit. So we'll, we'll, we'll take a little win when we can get it. It's so weird because the Caps, I think, they're really interesting because they're one of the only physical teams in the East that can sort of play that style with Boston, and their top line matches up very well with their top line. So it's almost a perfect storm for the Capitals to own the Boston Bruins. It may be the only team in the East to do that. If you had to put a few bucks on one of those two teams to win the Stanley Cup right now, where's your money going? Oh, you know, Boston has had that success year in and year out uh, for the last, geez, it seems like a decade now. But it seems like Tuka Rath can never get over that hump and win the Cup. Uh, when uh, The one thing I'm seeing right now is Ovechkin is playing like he did two years ago when they won the Cup. So I would win the Cats right now. He's playing a very physical he wants to score. He wants to win. He wants that cup again. And I think, you know, with the somewhat earlier exit last year, 
uh, gives a little extra time to heal the body and whatnot, and he looks rejuvenated, and the Caps are scary. If you had to pick a team, not Boston, that was going to beat the Caps coming out of there, who would it be? Ooh, out of the East? Out of the East. Uh, That's a good yeah, question, man. You know, yeah, I think the Islanders are tricky because they play such a defensive style uh, and they can play a little grittiness. I don't know if they have the scoring to keep up with them, so I'd, I'd probably go with Tampa Bay because Tampa Bay, they're sort of flying under the radar. They're starting to get a little more healthy. You know, Victor Hedman came back a few weeks ago. You know, that's a team that they had so much hype last year. They were the first-round exit. Uh, I think that's a team to really keep an eye on as they get healthier and hopefully make that big stride uh, in the back half of the season going into the playoffs, they could be a team to watch. They would have been one of the cup favorites at the beginning of the year. So with the way that their season has gone, they've got 33 points in 29 games. Right now they're fifth in the wild card race, um, but well, about five points and a few games in hand here. The teams like Philadelphia and Pittsburgh that they're trying to track down. But how much would their value to win it all have changed from a betting perspective if somebody's like, hey, you know what? Throwing a few bucks on the Capitals right now might be actually really good value compared to where it was earlier in the season. Yeah, so I think the Lightning Open is a favorite. Uh, I think they were tied with Toronto, and now they have almost similar odds. So I think Tampa Bay was somewhere in around the five to one range, and now they're about twelve to one, and Toronto's thirteen to one. Uh, for the Caps, they've gone the opposite way. Caps were probably about ten to one. They're about eight to one right now, tied with Boston. So it really is a coin flip between those two teams to win the Stanley Cup, Boston and Washington, that is. Uh, but I think the way that the Lightning has been going, as you say, underperforming, uh, I, I think 12-1 to 1 is a great value for that team because they're absolutely stacked front end to back end, good goaltending, uh, and they just still, I, I just feel like they haven't shown us what they are yet, and they're just going to hit that peak at some point and just take off. Moving, uh, moving over to the Western Conference, Scott, what, uh, what has been the case since the recent firings of both uh, Jim Montgomery and uh, Pete DeBoer in Dallas and San Jose, respectively? Have you seen much move with those? Yeah, it's been pretty static, uh, which is a little surprising. You know, San Jose, they've dropped five games. They fired their entire coaching staff, but they're still in the playoff line, which is a little intriguing. I didn't think that they'd had a playoff shot, and personally, I'd stay away from them. Dallas, on the other hand, just sort of hangs around. They don't really do much, but you see them there. They're, they're third on the uh, playoff list uh, for the Western Conference, that is, to win the Western Conference behind Colorado and St. Louis. I think they're, they're a little overvalued as well. I, I don't really put them as one of the cup contenders or one of those uh, Western Conference contenders, in my opinion. Would you summarize the Western Conference as just being a little bit strange so far this year? I mean, you mentioned Dallas third best odds to win the, the conference right now, and they are the top wildcard team. They're basically seventh place in in the conference, and I think that's probably because the conference is, is kind of still very up for grabs in a lot of aspects of it. Yeah, and, and that always seems to be the West. It's, it's so tightly contested between the top 10 to 11 teams, and then there's a bit of a drop-off. Uh, and, and, you know, one of the teams that's getting tremendous value, in my opinion, and they're starting to get healthy, and they're starting to roll is the guys to the south of you guys, Calgary Flames. You know, they're, they're starting to really put it together. Um, Johnny Goudreau, the, you know, he's looking phenomenal. He's starting to open up more space and score and stuff like that. So they're 18-1 to 1 to win the Western Conference right now. That is tremendous value. Uh, any trends or any games that you like this weekend that we should know about? Uh, well, I, again, I was talking about the Minnesota Wild and uh, at home, and they're, they're seven one and two at home, and they have the Flying Flyers uh, come to town who who are doing quite well. They're seven two and one over their last ten. I bet you the Flyers are going to be a, a, a pretty decent favorite in Minnesota. So that might be a nice spot for an underdog. Excellent, something we'll definitely keep an eye on. Scott, thanks for the time, buddy. Have a good one, guys. Thanks for having me. There you go. That's Scott Hastings from Odd Shark. Check him out at oddshark.com. Um, interesting. Dallas with the third best odds to win the West right now. And they look, they've, they're playing pretty well. They only, they've only allowed 76 goals, which I think is, yeah, it's by far, well, it's a little bit better than Arizona. But those two teams are kind of, when it comes to goals, goals against, um, right up near the top there. Um, but with the coaching change, like, how does that, how would, if you're in that room, Cass, how does that go over when it catches you off guard? 
I mean, for all we know, they might have loved this guy. I mean, I don't they, know. They, I mean, well, you well, think well, I with the amount of know, players right? getting called out by various people within the organization well, that they yeah, love? Yeah, that's true. But that's further up in the organization. That's further right? up. Well, yeah. And yeah, I... Like, do you think it impacts them one way or the other, or do you, do you think they just kind of step in? I think in it and, does. I think it does, yeah. but it depends. It depends on where they go with it. Like, and and the reason I say that is they they have been trending upwards solidly. Six, three, and one in the last ten. Um, you know, they've won three in a row now. Uh, started off the season really, really slow. And when we talked about them before the season, I thought that they were going to be one of the best teams in the Western Conference because they added some really good depth they still had some good defense and they have solid solid goaltending and they still have all of those things and and now that they've been playing better I don't think I don't think the whole system like not is going to all of a sudden you know change you're not going to come in and blow everything up like the Sharks moved out all their coaching except for Buchner whereas the other guys just just one just one and everyone else is still in place and and pieces are still there and you're not going to have like a completely new situation your head coach is just gone and so I, I I I guess it could impact it negatively but I don't I don't see it doing that how long does it take you to get used to a new coach like, but it's not a brand new coach like yeah they, that's true it's somebody you know just it's a somebody different they role. know just a different yeah. role and that's where i'm kind of like okay well some of the things are going to change like in the meetings who's talking that's going to change maybe who's focusing on the power play or the penalty kill like there's going to be some little differences but practices i guarantee you are going to look pretty close to exact same um, um you know the type of video that they go through the way that they're going to try to implement their systems are going to be the same the only part that could change and this is where i don't know where it's going to go is the utilization of jamie ben and tyler Sagan. Mm-hmm. how much are they playing how often are they out there what situations are they in and um, does that change that's going to be that's going to be the shift because we saw before Jim Montgomery, um, uh, those guys, their minutes, they actually played a lot more, like especially when Hitch was there, like they played a lot more minutes and it was reduced by Montgomery. And so does it stay at that reduced ish level? Or you fire those or guys do up those again. those guys yeah. get fired up again. Yeah. Now maybe that'll be the case. We'll see what happens on that front. Uh, Scott had mentioned the Calgary Flames and how they might be a good value bet right now. We're going to get to uh, Peter Lubardius a little bit later on in the podcast. I know, but it, they've won six in a Everything row. Everything is like, like flip flop, flip flop. Like, Remember when I asked asked you guys on keep it or clip it a couple weeks ago i said they were done. if that was going to be a rallying point for this team when they when they flipped coaches and they haven't lost since Cass. i said and you guys laughed done. at me for that i laughed question. at you and i said they're done and now look at it and now look at them it's just... extremely impressive and we'll get to that obviously with pete lubardius who's going to join us uh the edmonton oilers uh let's quickly hit on what's happening here for the second game in a row dave tippett We'll have uh, Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl on separate lines. Um, McDavid did just fine last game. He had a couple of uh, points at even strength, had the power play assist as well. Dreisaitl chipped in on the power play, but that second line didn't do much five on five. Uh, Your thoughts on Tippett deciding to keep those guys separated, at least for part of another game. Got to do something. Yeah. They're struggling a little bit. Not, not even necessarily from just a point capacity, but as a whole, the team is struggling as a little bit and they're trying to find ways to wake up. They have not been very good. If you've watched, they have not been very good. The energy has been down. The excitement seems to not be there. Like I noticed it's a good point. Yeah. Well, a whole bunch of that you think about just not just the dressing room, but on the ice during the games, like the most of the season, they've looked like they've been having a lot of fun. Even when they've lost games, it's like they, it looks like they realize how, not fun winning is in the next game they come out and they play really well and we've lost a little bit of that and the concern is that it's not just the dog days of summer the concern is that that's just the identity that they're kind of or that they're losing maybe that excitement and the the positive identity that they've worked for and now Tippett's trying to have having to do different things like splitting those guys up which I still hate like I hate not having those guys play together because they're just so good like but David's line wasn't bad last game. No, they right? weren't bad. Like, I think that's why I think that's why they're still apart. You think so? Because the McDavid line actually looked like it could be pretty dangerous still. Well, it's Well, it did. It's Cassie had two goals. I mean It's always gonna like you have Connor McDavid on the line. Why, it's always a, gonna be that's dangerous. That's the perfect exactly. Right? But so it's put just your eyes settle somewhere else and make with a, Leon. Like this is uh, it goes from being like kind of dangerous to being like in like from being like, like really dangerous because you got McDavid to like this is insane because you got Leon. I just, I just look at it from a perspective where everybody in in this market here at Edmonton goes, 
we all we do is bitch about their lack of secondary scoring. But you've got a guy who some people say, oh, he could have won the hard trophy this year. I don't complain and about secondary scoring. Play him on your first, you refuse to play him I on your second line. I don't complain about secondary scoring. I think sometimes it's important. But it's like, listen, how many goals per game are you expecting from a team? Like how, Three that's if a you can. I mean, that'd be can. great. How many goals per game when Leon and Connor are together are they producing? Two. So why the heck are you worried about secondary scoring if, like, oh, the fourth line only Nobody. scored one goal in two games or the third line only scored one goal in two games or the second line only scored one goal in two games? Because it's like, well, there's your three because those guys are going to, on average, they're going to get, like, 1.8, 1. 1. 1. 1. 1.9-ish yeah. goals per game. You need one from your second line or your third line or your fourth line most games to win. But, That's it. So that, why are you freaking out about secondary scoring? I get way more concerned about uh, being scored on. And I, I understand, um, like, when, when long droughts hit for some of those guys, it is concerning because you want them to be active and be involved. But when players are playing as many minutes as Connor, as many minutes as Leon, as much in the power play, because most points that guys get yeah. come on the power play, a lot harder to get them five on five. I don't freak out nearly as much about the secondary scoring. They need to chip in, but they need to chip on a, like a, a, a what, point two five. But you said you said you need two goals a game from that top line when those guys are together. Yeah. McDavid's line got the two goals last game right. without Drysaddle. Yeah. So why not have Drysaddle try to create the second line that because I think the long damage. term like are you do you do you think that two goals a game with McDavid without, without Drysaddle, Drysaddle is, is possible on that line? Well, you said always kind of dangerous. Well, it's always going to be dangerous. Yeah. I, I would expect still one. Yeah, I would think he could generate one he's goal. He's going to generate one, whether it's but a goal or But then if that assist, second gonna, line can get you a goal, then you get one on the power play, you're laughing. Yeah, because Connor's going to get, like, what, like what 1.05% or 1.05 per game to 1.10. Yeah, I'd have to check the average like, when he's yeah. by, by himself. And uh, so it's like, okay, he's going to average about one. They're not going to sustain two. Like, with Cassian and Nygaard on that top line, you're not going to sustain a two-goal. I understand they got it last game. They're Destiny. averaging it right now. Yeah, after one game. <laughs> uh, do you think Drysaddle looks different when he's not with McDavid? I think he he's looked that, different it, the last couple of games. Yeah. Not overall. Not overall. Okay. I think overall. He's played over a hundred minutes more than ninety nine percent of the league. Yeah. So which is crazy. It is crazy. It's uh what Pete Lombardi's in two minutes. Is that what you said, Hernan? Okay, let's do our Popeye chicken poll question then, because this kind of ties into uh McDavid. Um because let's say Connor McDavid's the best player in the league right now. Who's the second best player in the NHL? This is easy. Uh Nathan McKinnon, Jack Eichel, John Carlson, or David Pasternak so far this season. This is easy. I think it's easy too. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Nathan McKinnon. Okay, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm like you're not gonna get an argument from me. No, you can't. You can't argue that. Well, I don't know what is what's the poll what's, question say. What do uh, oh, I what, guess you can. what are the results? The results so far. Well, uh, let me guess. Seventy five percent Nathan McKinnon. No, sixty eight percent for Nathan McKinnon. Okay, yeah, close enough. Pasternak at twenty two percent, and Eichel and Carlson tied at five. But we do got a lot of responses on the Twitter feed saying Leon Drysdale. Well, then put him on his own line and let him be <laughs> let him be the second best player in the league, like. Well, he's a, I think he's in the top five. You could put him in that spot because he's been. Yeah, no, Leon, Leon has been fantastic this year. I'm he not has putting him ahead fantastic. of McKinnon, though. No, not overall. I think you said it really well a, a little while ago that he's a Leon Drysaddle is a top ten player that's been playing like a top three or top five. Which there's nothing wrong with that. Oh, not at all. Right. What about uh, Pasternak goal scoring though? That guy's an absolute oh, machine. Yeah, he's got 26. Yeah, he's got a lot. I mean. Well, Vetch can still track some down and wins a rocket with <laughs> I mean, you guys don't yeah, seem to yeah. believe me, but that's what's going to happen. I'm not. Well, Ovi's been on a heater too. Yeah. Well, Ovi's Ovi's life is a heater, man. <laughs> <laughs> he, he just Ovi. Just Ovi like has Eater. been yeah, life is a heater. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Ovi has been on a remarkable run for 15 years, like a decade and a half. It's absolutely ridiculous. It's 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 nuts. Uh, all right, we've got him. All right, let's go to Peter Lubardius, which is this is great, actually. Uh, he's probably going to agree with us because we're all smart minds. But uh, Peter's with Sportsnet down in Calgary, which is good because we're going to TSN. I never get to chat with him, but on a podcast, it's anything uh -huh. goes, which is awesome. Uh, Pete, appreciate the time. How are you doing? Uh, I'm great. Thanks for having me. Hey, our poll question today, second best player in the NHL right now, McKinnon, Eichel, Carlson, Pasternak, or somebody else. Who would you put in there behind McDavid? So oh, Connor is number one for absolute sure. Is that what we're saying? Well, actually, no. If you want to mix it up, you can mix it up. Sure. <laughs> no, honestly, I, I don't think there's much to choose from between Connor and Nathan McKinnon. Now, granted, I just saw Nathan McKinnon three days ago in all his splendor and glory and game-changing ability and how strong and powerful and how he makes everybody around him better 
how he still has produced like crazy and has spent most of the year without Rantanen and out without Gabriel Landeskog. It's it's not that hard for me. McKinnon is a freak. He's awesome. Yeah, anytime you watch him, you just watch that guy play, and you're like, man, there's Ugh. there's no weaknesses in that guy's game. There just isn't. I mean, he's phenomenal. No, he is just, you know, he's so explosive, but he's so powerful. The play he made the other day against the Flames where Travis Hamannick had him in the corner and looked like he had pretty good position, and the next thing you know, he rolls off to the inside, you know, gets gets there and then the one thing Jansen I don't know if you agree or disagree one thing that I don't think is talked about enough with him is no one shoots it on the fly better than him there's a lot of guys that might hit it you know being set up but his ability to basically be running at a defenseman at a thousand miles an hour and stick it in the top shelf I don't think there's anybody in the sport that shoots it as well on the absolute fly as Nathan McKinnon does. I would completely agree with you. I think one of the things that if you really watch, even when he's doing that, is he's not a guy that needs to stick handle the puck to pull it in a position to shoot it. Like it's just it's just ready to go. And and it's that gone. Yeah, and that is one of the hardest things to do because the tendency, and you see it with young players all the time, is to stick handle, to pull it back in your stance and then shoot. And he's just like it's just there and it's gone. It makes a huge, huge difference. And, and how hard is it to stop? <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably pretty difficult for sure. You're right. He's been amazing. Uh, Pete, we wanted to get you on to talk about the uh, the surging Calgary Flames. And it's interesting because this has all happened since obviously they went through a lot of drama with their head coach. Um, how... How did the how did that group of players handle what could have been or probably was an extremely awkward and and unique situation? Well, it's I've been in the business for thirty five years and covering the sport for a long time, and I, I can't remember a season like this one, and even the two weeks, whether it was their long losing skid, and then the situation that happened with Bill Peters. I give starting with the general manager, Brad Chileving, just a, a ton of credit. Um, to me, the leadership that he has shown, his ability to care about people, bind people together, uh, Jeff Ward and his coaching staff. Listen, Jeff has been coaching for 30 years and has always had hopes of being an NHL head coach, has been in the running for a number of different jobs over the years, has coached at every different level. He's coached in Germany, other spots in Europe. Um, I, I can't say enough about just everybody's ability, including the players. And guys, I think what really helped the Flames was the schedule. So they played so much through October and November, and then they got to November 30th, and they didn't play again until December the 5th. And that week really helped everybody reset. They got a mental break, a couple of days off, um, an opportunity for the coaching staff to Im implement some different things, to, for Jeff Ward to have some individual meetings and get to know the people. Not that he didn't. He's been here for more than a year now, but it's different when you're the guy as opposed to when you're the associate coach. So the timing of the reset couldn't have come at a better time they've changed things up they've really tried to have a more balanced team moving some of their better players on different lines throughout the lineup and guys are buying in but guess what when you're winning it's easy to buy in so it's been a great start to the Jeff Ward situation I've known Jeff going back to his time with the Hamilton Bulldogs in the early 2000s school teacher by trade before he became a coach bright intelligent very experienced good communicator has done it at all different levels has been a very very important part of many staffs including boston's in 2011 that won the stanley cup um i think he's the right guy for what has to be 
one of the most unique and difficult situations anybody could ever find themselves in in this business. So one of the players that we've seen just through the through this reset that they've had the last couple of weeks that really explode again has been uh, Johnny Goudreau. What have you seen that is different in his game now as opposed to maybe at the start of the season? Well, I think he's just getting there, to be honest. Uh, it's been a really rough ride for Johnny, and not just this year, but even if you go back to whether it was the playoffs or the mandated break, when, you know, the Monahan line with Gaudreau and Lindholm for 60 games last year, you could probably put them up against anybody, but um, they did not find that level again. And Johnny, more than anybody for me, has had a miserable time of getting back to a level that he's acceptable with. And he wasn't moving his feet. He was very frustrated. His body language told you that. I mean, it got hard. The game, I think, for the first time ever in his career got really hard. And this is a guy who's really, when you think about where he came from, size, there's no way this guy was going to be able to jump over all the hockey hurdles that he has. But this is a different one. And as I say every day in Calgary, well, guess what? If you want to be among the best of the best, paid that way, produced that way, you don't get to just enjoy all the good stuff. You've got to be able to fight through hard and difficult and find your way. And it's been tough for him, but he's more engaged. He wasn't around the puck enough. Um, he wasn't in the fight. He wasn't in the battle. Now, granted, when you're his size, you know, you're not going to win a lot of down low, below the hash marks battles. But guess what? In this league, you got to go to some hard places to be effective. And earlier in the year, flat out, he wasn't getting there. And, and I see his game building to a much better place. Another guy who's got his game going as of late is Milan Lucic. Uh, and uh, look, he's got goals in what, three or four or three in his last four. Um, is, yeah, did he get, yeah did he, did he get moved around or did something just start clicking with his game or how come all of a sudden not just a little bit of success but seems like a lot does does confidence in sports and in life matter big time I was gonna say no <laughs> yeah. um listen you guys saw a lot of it Lance had a tough run in his life, forget about hockey the last little while. When you lose your father, as he did in 2015, and then, you know, your happy place is the hockey rink, and then that's not so happy, that's hard. That's real life. And, you know, I've known Milan for a long time. I called two Memorial Cups that he played in uh, back in the mid-2000s always been a very passionate emotional guy um i've seen him have a real impact here on some of the younger players he wants to make a difference and he's made a difference in a big way for a great part of his career but you know he he's been down a tough road and not one more than one and people have a tendency in our business a lot not just in our business but whether it's fans you know, to think that everything's just about production and they can't understand. And you know what? At a certain point, you know, is this the Milan Lucic of 2011? No. But when you have a lot of core young players like the Flames do, it's important to grow them the right way. And, and I think he's been a big part with his maturity, his experience, all that he's gone through, I think people like he and Derek Ryan have made a massive difference, guys, lately in how the Flames have had to deal with a very adverse situation. Um, this is going to sound a little harsh, but you know what you need to go through hard? You need grown-ups, and you need experience, and you need people who have actually – probably had a bumpy road to help you through bumpy roads. And so he's playing much better. I'm excited for him. Um, yeah, he's, he's going really well. And he was going pretty well even before he scored three in his last four. 
Pete, before I let you go, I can't let you slide away here without a little bit of junior talk because I know you love the game. Um, with another World Juniors just around the corner, do you have one World Junior memory that really jumps off the page for you? I'm sure you have so many, but oh, is there, my yeah, is there what? one? Is there one that that you know? Right, right when I ask you this question, is there one that kind of jumps out in your mind? Um, you know what, Dustin? It's a great question. I've been to so many. I love the tournament so much. Believe it or not. Probably right at the top of the list for me would have been the 1999 tournament in Winnipeg. Canada ended up losing to the Russians 3-2 in overtime. It wasn't the most talented Canadian group. The goalie you might be familiar with, his name Luongo. is Roberto Luongo. Yep. Um, he was absolutely sensational. Um Canada beat an incredibly gifted Swedish team led by the Sedins and a lot of other good players. 6 1 in the semifinal of that tournament. The five minute standing ovation that those kids got in Winnipeg prior to that final game makes me emotional every single time I reflect and think back it, it's one of the most special moments as a sporting fan that i've ever ever experienced and believe it or not through all the wins all the losses that that memory for me might be as entrenched and as special as any of the rest of it but i mean we could fill 13 <laughs> podcasts with those memories yeah. yeah i know but i knew you'd give us a great answer and you did pete thanks a lot for the time man Okay, guys, enjoy the show. Keep up the good work. There you go. That's Pete Lubardius uh, joining us from Sportsnet in Calgary. Um, I think Luongo was beaten off of a face-off. Face-off was one back and a wrist shot from the from the top of the circle. If I remember, oh, right? I beat him glove side. side. Yeah, yeah I mean, it was to his blocker side. Yeah, left and side. And fired. Too. I can't remember which Russian scored the Who was it scored the winner? Ooh, the, it would have been a left really shot, young. I think. Um, can't remember who scored the winner, but I remember the goal that he's talking about. And Luongo was, had been phenomenal in that tournament. So I was a baby. Yeah. Uh, all right. Should we, did you say you were a baby? Like I was young. I wasn't a baby. But well, how young. old you been? I, I was eighteen. Okay, yeah. So yeah, would have been thirteen. Yeah, it might have been tough for a thirteen-year-old to remember. I, I still remember chunks. You of remember it. chunks? I don't remember yeah. the whole. Don't yeah, I just I can't remember who scored the the goal for Russia. Oh, well, that's okay. Uh, all right, let's play a sport clip haircuts. Keep it or clip it home of the MVP experience where it is good to be a guy. And, of course, they are a proved drop-off location for 630 Chad Santa's Anonymous. Uh, with, uh, with Gager not here, I get to slide into the role of answering questions, which is, is this what it feels like to be Gage right now? <laughs> Is your mind like more twisted? Yeah, and I'm sitting on a coat <laughs> uh, to bump myself up here a little bit. That's good. Um, all right, uh, Hernan Salas is going to ask the questions for Keep It or Clip It. Hernan, uh, let's do this. Hey, Hernan, hey, this is your big day. Your it time. is. It is. Hernan's big day. I can't Mom's, wait. I can't wait to spaghetti. show. Uh, I can't wait to show my mom this. Yeah, yeah, mom's so spaghetti. Proud. Hey, mom. Nervous. <laughs> That's my boy <laughs> on the surface. <laughs> Are you doing eight mile? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. So, uh, what do we got here? Here we go. The Oilers dropped three or four at home. It's time to worry. Keep it or clip it. Well, thanks for the question, Hernan. This is yeah. this is really neat. Uh, I'm going to pull a gauge here. Uh, Cass, I'll pass this one to you. <laughs> I want to. I really wanted you to do this because it's the first one, and I want you. Okay, to enjoy no, I uh, look. I'll say this. Um, I would be a little bit worried. I would well, be, you got to keep I, it or clip it. You oh, oh yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't even know how to play. <laughs> um, okay, the Oilers dropped three or four at home. It's time to worry. Keep it. There you go. What Good do you job. Say? Good job. Now you keep going. Oh, okay. Well, no, I just what worries <laughs> me the most here is the goaltending, and Koskinen. Uh, Mike Smith, we know Smith's play has is, is kind of gone downhill here a little bit. But Koskinen has been pretty stellar. Then he let in two bad ones against Ottawa. Bounced back with a good game, though. then let in six. Not that a lot of it was his fault, but one of them was from center ice. That stuff's going to happen, I guess. Um, I, I, I'm afraid that the goaltending might not be there to um, to keep them where they are. Could their goaltending still be good enough to sneak in with a wild card spot? Sure. But uh, I, I would be a little bit worried. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep it. I... I'm afraid the play around the goalie has been okay. what has been the problem. Which is fair. That last game, definitely, against Carolina. I think that has been the problem. The way the team has played as a whole has been a problem, not just the goaltending. I still have been way less um, tough 
on Mike Smith as many of you have. Uh, I think you guys are being too aggressive. Actually, with, I'm a pro Mike, Mike I'm Smith. A, I'm guy. way, I'm yeah, way, way more Smith. positive on some of the stuff he's done this year than a lot. Like I get where there's been some issues, and I know that yes, he plays farther back in his net, and sometimes things happen, but. I, I look at a lot of the games. They have not provided the support that he has needed to win. That's why his record is less. And, um, you know, Koskinen, I'm hoping, I'm hoping this is just a, a tough patch for him. Think about how crazy this is. Think about eight months ago. The city of Edmonton would have never been like, Koskinen let in six goals, including one from center ice, and must start the next game. Like, how <laughs> that's crazy that's is that? Ridiculous. But that's, that's kind yeah. of the sense you get. Bring back Peter. Give more Which contracts. Which is insane. Uh, all right. Next question. Moving on. Doing all your Christmas shopping in one day is the best way to go. Yep. Keep it. Get it all done. Knock it out. Get it finished. Not have to deal with the crowds again. I'm going to say clip it because it can never happen. I could never do it. I, do, I don't even know what that experience would be like. And I try to. I, I would need... So what are you talking, like eight hours? You're going to go for eight hours and put in a shift? You need eight, eight hours. hours. So this is, <laughs> like, so do you, like, go to, are you a person that goes to the store, then decides what you're going to get someone? Depends on the person, yeah. See, I'm like, a, I'm going to plan this out beforehand. Yeah. I'm going to know where I'm going to go and how long it's going to take me. And it's like, so you knock it out in, like, two and a half to three hours, and then you're done. And then you can go for a nice, you know, uh, lunch or a dinner and yeah. have a beer and relax. Yeah, and relax and hang out. Yeah, pick up some Popeyes on the way home. Yeah, exactly. Uh, well, you, you, you get a gift card do, from there anyway. You so, could yeah. do all your Christmas shopping in two and a half hours? No way. How is it that absurd that you could do that? I have to go to, I went to like, I bought things <laughs> from like six different places already. Travel alone is killing me. Wow. Oh, the internet? Oh, yeah, I guess. I don't really buy presents online. Because here's the thing. This is why I don't buy presents online. Because I screw up every single year. And I leave it until it won't be shipped here in time. Well, that's your own fault. Yeah. Well, no, it is my fault. I'm a horrible Christmas shopper. It's just that simple. All right. uh, So, yeah, I'm going to say clip it, I guess. That's how it works, right? All right, next. Anthony Duclair is the most dangerous offensive forward on the Senators. He's having a nice season. I'm keeping it. I'm keeping it because I think Anthony Duclair is a guy who's been put in a spot now where they need him to be what people thought he might end up being. And that's an offensive forward. Whereas some of the other spots, I think John Tortorella said, this guy can't even play and he's playing that's, all right so far Tortorella. this year. Like that's Tor- Tortorella so, is, uh, I mean, he's, he's improved a lot with what he's done and the way he's treated players. Like when all the, uh, the Bill Peters and abusive stuff, I was mm-hmm. like, Oh, there could be some tort stories. For it, yeah. Yeah. From, from the way he treated. Cause I know his, the way he operated was he always would pick like one or two guys and just shred them all the time. Shred them all the time. Same guys over and over and over. Like could never do anything. Why? Right. I don't know because some coaches do that. It doesn't make sense. It never made sense to me. But some coaches do that. He was one of them. Duclair was one of the whipping boys. Like where he yeah. just got absolutely picked on over and over and over again, and uh, shouldn't have, in my opinion. Like was a young player, extremely talented. Um, just maybe couldn't put it all together. And it looks like he's doing more of that uh, now in Ottawa. So. I'm 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 gonna keep it. I'm gonna. There keep are some it, other options. There's there, some but... other options there. So it, it's a it's um like a debatable keep it, but it's a it's a keep it. Nothing against Pajo or Kachuk, who will probably eventually be the answer. Yeah, to Kachuk that question, is going that way. I think yeah. I think Duclair right now is all right. Next, Kyle Dubis will make a blockbuster deal prior to the trade deadline. <laughs> I'm keeping it. I'm gonna keep it because they still haven't got to where that everybody. You heard Scott Hastings say right here. He said uh, they were the Stanley Cup co-favorite with the tra- Tampa Bay Lightning. ludicrous. Which is crazy anyway. You're right. I agree <laughs> with that. But they've made the coaching change. Um, if they are not in a playoff spot at the trade deadline, I bet you Kyle Dubas pulls the trigger on a blockbuster. I bet you it's Nylander on the way out, and they're bringing back in a cadre type and an upgrade on the blue line. Like that type of thing. That's what I, th- I just. It's possible. I don't I mean, think you can't. You, Dubas cannot afford he, to miss yeah. the playoffs. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna clip it. I don't think he does it. What? I don't think he does it. No, so I don't think, think he's he gets just gonna it done. let this team continue to be shit and and not get. No, any he'll of... do something in the summer, not oh, prior yeah, to the, the trade summer, Okay, but so they're gonna miss the playoffs. Yeah. So the Toronto well, Maple Leafs with Austin Matthews, John Tavares, uh, Mitch Martin are gonna miss the playoffs. And the Oilers with Leon Drysaddle and. Connor McDavid yeah, missed the playoffs. Uh, that's a good point. <laughs> but that, that <laughs> keeps costing people their jobs. It's true. Yeah. Uh, all right, next. Elf is one of Will Ferrell's top five movies. Keep it. 
Name uh, me five Will Ferrell movies that would be ahead of that. That would be ahead of Elf? Yeah. Oh. Well, do we count Old School? Yes. Yeah. Old School would be one. Anchorman. Anchorman would be two. Yeah. Um, I like Blades of Glory. Yeah, it's, I thought no, Blades of Glory was good. That's yeah. not better than Ricky Elf. Ricky Bobby, Talladega Nights. Yeah, that's no, right that's not better than Elf either. That's not better than Elf either. I like Elf. Um, but I don't think it's top five. It I honestly don't think it's top five. Top five. He's, you, how can you have Blades of Glory in the top five? How many times have you watched Blades of Glory? That movie like is twice. Hilarious. Maybe. No, it gets good. the people going, Cass. It, it does. Yeah, you could watch little clips from it. There's one or two <laughs> parts that are good, but no. no. Chaz Michael Michaels is figure skating. <laughs> right? That's funny. You were going to laugh there. That's a funny line. Oh, there's, I'm not saying it's not a good movie. I'm just saying it's not top five. Okay, but if we were to ask this question in the summer, would you actually say Elf is? Or are you just in the Christmas No, spirit? I would say Elf is. It's one of the one of the best. Don't make me argue against Will Ferrell, because I love all of his work. But I just don't see it as a top five. Sorry. Next. Bye, buddy. <laughs> Hope you find your dad. That is, actually, that's a pretty good line. It was a good movie. Uh, Thanks, Mr. Darwall. All right, yeah. Step Brothers is top five. Oh, yeah, Step Brothers, of course. For sure, it's Step Brothers. Night at the Roxbury. <sighs> the Other Guys. Oh, Other Guys. Yeah. I, I miss those. You're right. Those are all better than uh, Blaze Deep of Glory. Get Hard. I didn't really like Get Hard. That yeah, was okay. There are some parts of it. Anyways, moving on. We should do a Secret Santa gift exchange on the podcast next week. What do you think? The we four of us? What, Secret Santa? Secret Santa? But like, Hernan's names. gonna have to text us and tell us who. Um, so we don't know who. We do well, if Gage was here right now, we could have just pulled because our names because there's out only of hat. three of us, and we. Well, well, but Hernan really gets a present too. It's not a Secret Santa if like there's three of us and names in the hat. It's pretty. Well, what? On, what kind of? How about on Monday we draw names and, and then, then Thursday, 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 because that'll be my last podcast before I, I take off for the holiday. So, what do you think? We could do it. You sound like you're all bah humbug. <laughs> what? Yeah. Why yeah. are you being bah humbug right now? Because it's not really a secret Santa. <laughs> well, Why is it not like, a how secret, secret Santa? is it going to be? <laughs> it, well, very much there's secret. There's three or four of us. Listen, if there's four of us yeah. and we all put our name in the hat and draw a name and don't tell anybody, it's a secret. It's a secret. And there's it could be any three people. And then what are we going to do when we walk in and we walk in like holding the wrap oh, and put it down? Damn, that's. What do, you, uh, what, do you, what do you mean? Like what if I uh, what if I brought a thing a wrap, and we all use the and same wrap? Use the same wrap. I'll get a four and we pack still of wrap. walk in with boxes that are different size. Like or, or we all buy like the bags the same size. Yeah, and then yeah. the bag same same size bag. Gift must fit in bag. I'll provide the bags. I think that works. What what's happening? Okay. I mean, I'll do yeah, it. Yeah. I'm not going to be yeah, a Grinch. I don't want to. Well, you. Uh, I, don't wanna, the, I don't want to force you to. I have like the all holidays. kinds of secret Santa stuff. I already did my one day of shopping, Dusty. <laughs> Listen, I did my one day of shopping. You, I got it done. You said you could do shopping in just a matter of minutes online. What's the I limit? Got though? it done already. Ah, twenty bucks. Twenty bucks. Yeah, 20 yeah. Bucks? yeah. that's not bad. Twenty bucks. If I get Dusty. I'm spending two. <laughs> bah humbug. Dollarama, boys. Dollarama. Uh, yeah, that's a good point, actually. <laughs> I'm going to buy him the Magic Gathering cards. <laughs> you're just going to give me some of the ones you already have. And then you're going to be like, hey, I could use those. Uh, is that what you would want if I draw no. your name? Okay. Are you sure? Or are you just saying yeah. that like, is it to trick me? No, I'm you, sure. Okay. All right, last one. Flames fans should be very concerned about Johnny Goudreau's 24 points in 33 games. I clip it. He's, he's warming up. He's getting there. I, uh, I think he's, he's going to be fine. So I'm not overly concerned. So no, they shouldn't be either. I'm going to keep it. I mean, if he's just getting there and he's at 24 right. and 33 right now. 24 and 33. Dude had 99 points last year. Yeah. He's on pace for like, what's he on pace for? Right. Like 60? So he had a 55? rough start to the season. And so if he goes a point per game the rest of the way, you're going to be disappointed in that? Like, uh, or be, be very concerned? If he, like, So if he goes a point per game the rest of the way, he's a 65-point guy? Yep. Yeah, I would be concerned. For about one year, he lost yeah. thirty-four points from last year. That's huge. That's a, it's two-thirds of his points yeah, from last the team, year. Team also struggled, but is I that because know. of him? I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm keep it. A, I'm a little worried. Um, so yeah, there you go like, again. That's the name of today's episode. Humbug. Bah, hum, what, you, what was it? Bah humbug. That's it. Bah yeah. humbug. Bah humbug. I'll Google that's it. I'll Google it. it figure yeah. it out. Yeah, that's what we will do. Um, all right. So there we go. That's the uh, ep- first ever episode of Two Guys. We didn't even get a no going. Oh, and we didn't even get any good stories today. Do we have any stories? You know what? I want you to, because you never tell stories. All let's, right. Let's go um, story. So we were talking about World Juniors because th- that was a story. Wait, um, wait a second here, though. I was supposed to be the pervert on today's podcast. Oh, place. I was. You just you didn't, you just didn't pick up on it. Oh, you were the pervert? You just didn't pick oh, up on okay. it. Oh, okay. Uh, you want a random story? 
Yeah, I just, you know what, Dusty? You ask a lot of questions. I do ask a lot of questions. And we don't hear many stories from you. What type of story do you want? I mean, I never played in any sort of... Yeah, but you've been around the media biz for a while. Been around the media biz for a while. Um, Jeez. This is why I'm not a good storyteller. I'm the guy who passes the questions along. Um, I could tell you a... uh, Well, that's not a good story. Well, what what story? Well, I used to to be pretty intense into uh, ball hockey. Back in the day. Did you ever play any sort of ball hockey? No. Game? No? Not ball hockey. No, I guess you were too busy like making Kim, the but... NHL. Uh, but it, so I was in inter, intermurals at, at Lethbridge. How do you say? Intermurals? Intermurals. You know, you would go play in college. Yeah. It was in university. Um, so we were playing in a, a game against uh, a group of guys, and it was co-ed, so there was one girl on each team. And Well, I'd like to know where you come out on this, because she was a real bitch. <laughs> um, so anyway, we were playing, and she was hacking the shit out of me. And I was, I was like, I was trying to take it as much as I possibly could. But at one point, I had had enough. <laughs> and I'm still not proud of this moment. But we were walking side by side up the floor. And she was giving me an earful. So I looked the other way, and I speared her right in the gut. <laughs> and all hell broke loose. And she ended up she ended up being the one that got suspended from intramurals, and I didn't. Well, here's the thing. Is that the type of story you're looking for? That's, a, that's pretty funny. I'll just I say like this. That. I mean, guy or girl. Shouldn't matter. She deserved it. Shouldn't matter. Well, we can, oh, okay. Yeah, we so, sorry. That. Shouldn't matter. <laughs> it shouldn't matter. But it shouldn't matter, right? Like, quality? I don't think it the should quality. matter. Right. Shouldn't matter. Exactly. That's what I shouldn't said. That's the, issue. that's the exact thing I said when their team, I said, she's out here playing with us. She's one of us. Yeah. That's what I said. Inclusivity. Yeah. That's what happens when you ask me for a story. I've done a lot of really mean things to people along the way. It's... <laughs> It's not a good look at all. Gager would have said something dirty about that, though. For sure. He would have said, said, said spirit. Spirit. <laughs> <Spearder. Spearder. laughs> <laughs> that reminds me of the story about these headbands for skirts. <laughs> oh, what a beauty. Um, all right, that's going to do it for uh, episode, what do we got? Episode 24. Bah humbug. And that's because of you. We're doing Secret Santa, and you're bloody well going to enjoy it, Cass. Um, Gager will be back, I think, on Monday. Who knows? Who knows with that guy? Uh, for Hernan Salas, Matt Cassie, and I'm Dustin Nielsen. Of course, thank you to our sponsors, Oddshark.com. Check them out, all your sports betting needs at Oddshark.com. Sport Club Haircuts, where it's good to be a guy. And Popeye's legendary Louisiana chicken today. We'll be back with episode 25 to do our Secret Santa draw on Monday. Thanks for listening to the episode, and have a good weekend.